What's up, everybody? This is Adi from Gate 7 International coming to you again with yet another deep dive. Today, we are going to be checking out and analyzing our latest signing, Abu Bakr Kamara, who spent last year at Aris Thessaloniki. You guys saw him a couple times in the games he played against us. A lot of different opinions about this player. Many people excited, some not so much. So we're going to jump into this in a little bit to see really what we can expect from this player. Is there stuff to get excited about or is there stuff to be upset about? We'll get into that very shortly. But before we jump into the analysis, as always, guys, if you haven't done so already, don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit that button on the bottom right-hand side of your screen. The bell if you want to be notified anytime we go live or anytime one of these deep dives come out. I have a feeling there's going to be more coming. The club is keeping me busy. The more players they sign, the more of these that I do. And I do love me some deep dives. So let's hope there's more coming. Let's hope there's more for us to get excited about. So, boys, Abu Bakar Kamara, deep dive is here. What can you guys expect from this player? We're going to jump into that now. He is a 27-year-old Mauritanian striker that is now going to be playing for the rented white featuring for us this coming season standing at five foot 10 inches 177 centimeters for the metric kids 81 kilos or 178 pounds not the tallest but good size and he's got some muscle on him so like to see that he's a physical striker for those of you that may not have been aware already as far as his defensive ability goes, he's not the, the profile of him as a player. He's not uh, his physicality goes very far. He uses that in a lot of things. That's that's in his defensive ability, his dribbling ability and and his just overall movement. He uses all of his physical attributes to his advantage. Uh, he does have a willingness to track back, which would explain why Pedro Martins is about this signing. He values tracking back. And he does that. So that's going to be where the interest comes from. Uh, he's very aggressive in the final third, uh, from what I saw. Uh, not just in terms of his movement, his off-the-ball movement, but his shooting determination. So uh, very aggressive in the final third. Very, very much has a striker's instinct in that regard. Dribbling ability is average if we're considering the technical aspect of things. As I mentioned before, he relies on his physical strengths, his speed and his physicality more so to get by than, than trickery or skill. His off-the-ball movement, I already alluded to earlier, is, is excellent. Uh, as, a, as a player, he, he does move. I mean, there's, there are parts of the game, especially in formation, when the attack is building up where he'll sit. He will sit in that striker position if it's not a 4-4-2, but he will wander left and right. He'll try to get behind the defender and make a move. So this is this movement was sorely lacking for us last season, so that is a huge positive that we see coming out of this. Um, Possession-wise, he's he's not going to wow you guys with his touch, so don't expect any fancy dribbles. Don't, don't expect a lot of crazy footwork, in whether it's in build-up or on the dribble. He doesn't do any of that. He's competent in possession. He's very direct. He can connect with his teammates short, maybe as a one or two, one and a one, two here and there. That's about what you get with him. Uh, as far as his downfield upside, he'll drop down deep to get possession. Uh, the occasional through ball, maybe occasional long ball, but his opportunity creation is coming primarily from a short pass rather than than crossing or through ball or any other means. So uh, the value is not going to be as much in his playmaking ability, although there is some there. And when it does happen, you're you're going to sit there and, and wonder where this came from. So that's the general player profile. Again, we're going to, we're going to focus a lot on his off the ball movement, which is really, really nice. And the positions that he gets into, because this is where his value proposition comes in. So we're going to touch on all that in just a moment. So first thing we're going to take a look at here are his statistics with regards to his goal creation statistics, his goal creation statistics. So as 
as I've been doing the last couple of deep dives, you guys have really enjoyed when I compare players that are coming in to other players. Primarily, it's been strikers with Yusef El Arabi and their goals, his goal scoring capability. So here we go. We have Kamara side by side with Yusef El Arabi looking at non penalty goals, shots, shot assists, assists, all of that together. And it shouldn't be any surprise to you guys when it comes to non penalty goals, non penalty XG shots. The volume with Youssef El Arabi is higher. And this is even in a season where El Arabi is on a down note. So if it's a question about volume and whether he's roughly the same as Youssef El Arabi, no. Now that could be primarily because he was playing for Adis. Adis isn't going to be controlling the ball as much or getting as many opportunities. But this is the data as it, as it stands. Now, the one area where he kind of edges out El Arabi is in uh, shot assists or so creation of opportunities for his teammates. They're primarily coming from short passes, and this was an area where Youssef El Arabi really didn't do well this season, or I should say didn't do well compared to other seasons with us. So to make of that what you will, but it's just something to be mindful of. Uh, more on his goal threat, four of the 10 goals he had for Adis last season came from penalties. His non-penalty goals came primarily from his runs behind the defender. Uh, he has great pace, especially in these long sprints. His acceleration isn't the quickest, but man, when he hits top speed, he's really tough to close down. The, the goal threat context all almost always came where he would be in during build up, waiting for the defender to take their eyes off of him, sitting in that back part, kind of like what Onyakuru would like to do. When I talked about him in the deep dive, similar type of thing where he would just sit there and then take off when he had a chance. And it, you know, whether whether the the ball behind the defender was coming from a pass from his teammate, or maybe he could have even been capitalizing off of a bad bounce. The these are the areas where the most dangerous context came from him as a player. As far as where he takes his opportunities, he will he will literally rip a shot anywhere from around 25 meters. It doesn't matter. Uh, sometimes if it's a clear opportunity or not, uh, he'll he'll just take a shot. There, I was getting frustrated watching it. I know probably Adi's fans were too. Uh, Instead of him passing the ball to maybe a teammate, he would rip some of these shots. Saw him kill a couple birds, as Lambert likes to say. Uh, but all in all, I it was an there's an acceptable amount of shots on target. His efficiency is about 42%, which isn't half bad. So uh, all things considered, that's pretty good. Um, he does have a tendency to make contact with the ball when he's receiving like a cross or a ball into the penalty area, but his, his contact isn't super clean. And what I mean by that is he's not getting great shots from those opportunities. So the, the best goal threat again is him getting behind these defenders, not really getting some of these poachers goals. Uh, at least that's what we saw from, from the film. Uh, so whether it's taking, maybe a poor header or one too many touches, or maybe he's just taking weak shots right on frame. Those situations he doesn't really take great advantage of. And that could be concerning for us going forward because we we are kind of looking for another guy that's a bit of a killer in the box, like Yusef El Arabi, something we hoped to Kenya would be like last year, which he did and didn't do. But just something, again, to be mindful of. Regarding his assist creation or the creation of opportunities for his teammates, those primarily came from through passes, the assists at least. Every assist was one of those long passes that were kind of few and far between that really, it really left me speechless. I mean, he, he, one of them he did against Olympiacos when Adis played against us, a remarkable through ball. That cut through, I, if I'm not mistaken, it, he cut through both Cisse and Oleg with one. I mean, he had a handful of them that were very nice. And again, they don't happen very often, but man, you don't expect them when they do. And so outside of those wonder balls that he had, most of his creations or 
uh, shot creations for his teammates or even assists where these short passes, usually back passes, he'd get the ball forward, maybe draw a defender or two, and then play it to a runner that was going to have a shot either at the top of the penalty area or outside of the penalty box. So that was most of the context for where those things happen. He, I didn't see a lot of him crossing the ball. That's not, he's not going to be going out wide and helping with that type of, uh, helping with that type of service. And he, he was a little too selfish to really play the ball a lot into the penalty area. Otherwise he, he preferred to be the guy that was taking a defender on and really making a shot. So that's, that's what we had regarding his goal threat. Uh, next is the build up, his build up in possession. So again, looking at the data compared to El Arabi, we don't see quite as much volume of him on the ball. Youssef El Arabi, and this is a down season for him, was a striker, is a striker that likes to get a little bit involved with play. Not so much last season. Last season, though, we did have problems with various aspects of build up. So I'm not going to let that bother me too much. But here we get a sense of kind of what Kamara does with respect to El Arabi. So similar pass accuracy, less volume in terms of uh, passing and getting involved in buildup, less progressive actions, uh, especially progressive passes. Youssef El Arabi would drop, would drop deep plenty of times to receive the ball and get the ball going forward. Abu Bakar Kamara is not going to do that quite as often. He's going to be the one making these progressive runs off the ball and be to be an outlet for those. Similar number of progressive carries between the two. Similar number of dribbles completed. Uh, Kamara's dribbles are going to usually be him maybe fainting and utilizing space to really sprint ahead of somebody versus El Arabi was a little bit more technical and using his dribbling ability to create space for him. And uh, again, Youssef El Arabi has more volume of touches in the penalty area versus Abu Bakar Kamara. So looking into the context of the buildup and really what we saw in the film with the buildup, uh, I will reiterate again what I said in his player profile. The dribbling ability is not – it's not something that's going to wow you. He doesn't have a lot of technical ability. What he does have is a great understanding of his physical attributes. He relies primarily on his physicality and his speed to get by everybody. Whether it's a feint or just trying to use speed to get by, that's what he does. And he was fairly successful. He had a little just over 50% dribble success. Uh, he would lose he would lose these one-on-one -on -one dribbles or um offensive duels when he was getting closed down in tight spaces. If he didn't have a space where he could hit the ball and run or at least make a quick feint or a move and, and really utilize space to run and sprint, that's when he would really lose the ball. Um, compared to, compared to El Arabi, his, his, his technical skill is, is definitely a step below. We'll, we'll say that much. And he, as I explained in the data, you know, the volume in his buildup is, is not there. So it shouldn't surprise anybody that he's not really a key figure in buildup. He can have his useful moments when he drops deep, especially if he's drawing a defender with him, uh, usually off of a quick one, two, whether it's him playing the one, two, or whether it's him bringing the defender close and running off his top speed just makes him dangerous in these types of progressive situations where buildup is moving our, the balls moving towards the final third. If he can get that type of, that type of release and, and draw the defender in, I mean, he creates a lot of dangerous opportunities and that would give great value for Libyakos. Um, I mentioned briefly about his one, two touch capability, uh, whether it's him playing the ball or receiving, uh, I didn't see a lot of evidence about continuous one touch scenarios where, you know, there's possessions where people are moving, passing one touch here and there. Aside from that one touch give and go situation here and there, that's really all I saw. So I can't speak to how, how well his possession would be in that. He usually has a tendency to take a touch or two in possession. So I wouldn't expect too much out of him there. Um, the, the downfield vision as I explained before with some of these through balls, it is relatively inconsistent, but even in buildup in some of these progression passes, you know, there's a game here and there where he'll just have a great ball and you just sit there like, wow, man, who is this guy, Pirlo? 
again, it's 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 inconsistent, but when it happens, it's something to marvel at. Uh, the his off ball movement and build up is really really nice. It was very helpful for Adis in multiple uh, counter scenarios. I compared him already once to Onyakuru. The he is kind of like an Onyakuru that just plays as a striker. Just there's uh, more more of a willingness for him to come back to receive the ball versus Onyakuru did not want to come receive the ball mainly because he was terrible in build up. He he just wanted people to pick him out and run. Camara wants to be picked out in stride, picked out on the run, but he will come back and receive the ball, and he's actually pretty decent in build-up. Next up we have his defensive ability, and regarding defensive ability, again, I'm going to repeat this, just like I said for the uh, Dennis uh, Aligic deep dive. We don't care so much at how often he's winning things. We don't care how great he is at closing people down. What we care about is is does he press can he press how does he press is he can he fit in the scheme and he seems to at least he did it for Adis. Adis is going to defend more so they're not usually pressing as high especially against top five teams and i thought he was competent he was pretty competent when it came to came to the press relatively competent also when it actually came into closing down with the ball again not as clinical as Yusuf el arabi but decent all in all uh, and in the air, in the air, you see a similarity there to Yusef Al Arabi. But again, regarding his aerial capability, he's not he's not amazing in the offensive part of that. He might win, he might win a decent number of balls in the air, but when he does, it it's he do, it doesn't really amount to much. But at the very least, when it's in the middle of the field or he's fighting for possession. Uh, he is very aggressive, very physical, and when he wins those, he does maintain possession. So at the very least, we have that. Aside from his pressing ability, again, I'm going to reiterate to you guys, he tracks back, and that's about what we really care about, or at, least, at the very least, that's what Pedro Martins cares about uh, when it, regarding his defensive ability. He tracks back. And that's what that's it. That's that's what we want. We want a guy that tracks back and is not just going to sit up top. Relative to Yusef Al Arabi, decent when it comes to closing these players down, and he, even though he's not the tallest individual, he's actually quite effective. So the there's his values right there. It's in the willingness to track back, and and again, once again, him relying on some of these physical capabilities to not just win the ball, but to be just a constant threat, hounding the opposing players. So now that we've taken a look at all of these things, now that we've taken a look at various things regarding his goal threat, his buildup, his defensive ability, there's a question some people have been asking on social media regarding what his potential impact could be. Is he the next Yusef al Arabi for us? Or is he the next Hassan or Takinho? So I'm going to tell you a couple of things. I don't think he's going to be the next Yusef Al Arabi for this club. Do I think he can play a role? Do I think he can get easily double digit goals? Yeah, for for Libya Kos, I think that's a possibility. And in that respect, yeah, I think that means he's probably going to more likely be a Hassan or a Tequino than a Yusef Al Arabi. Now, in terms of his skill set, I see him as a player that has a little bit more to offer than Hassan and Tequino, at least at least in build up. So I think he has what it takes to be more successful than th those two, but I don't see how we can view him as the next Yusef Al Arabi. It's he doesn't have that profile, and he doesn't seem to have the skill set that would be needed. Guys, take a look back at the the strikers that have had twenty goal seasons for us. Guys like Miralas. Miralas didn't play striker all the time, but you get the point. Costas uh, Mitroglu. You know what I mean? The, those are just some names you need to think about. And when you think about them and Yusef Al Arabi and the skill sets they have, they have some similarities. And I don't see those similarities with Abu Bakar Kamara. I don't think that he's going to be that 20 plus goal striker for us. I don't think that's uh, a, a, something he can do. And again, that's not necessarily a bad thing. If this guy gets double digit goals for us, 10, 12, that's, that's a win. That's a win. You, you know, because he's not going to be taking these penalty kicks. That's probably going to be Yusef Al Arabi again. But if he's getting a decent number of goals, that's a win. That's a, a huge win for us. 
Are there risks with him as a player? Yeah. And the risk in terms of his player profile is in that he is very similar to Onyakuru. Not because I think he's going to be like Onyakuru or have the mentality or fall into the same holes of Onyakuru. It's just that the context with which he's successful is too similar to Onyakuru, and, and therein lies the risk. We're not looking for him as a winger. So it's a little bit different story. We're looking for him as a striker. So that gives him a little bit of more flexibility in movement instead of just being stuck out wide. But when your primary strength comes from you getting behind the defender like that, you have to wonder how useful can he actually be in Greece? I told you guys Onyakuru was not going to have that success in Greece, and I was worried about it. I saw value in Europe, but I didn't see value in Greece for him. I see a similar issue with Abubakar Kamara. I don't see a lot of traits that he has that make him valuable in Greece. Again, I do think he's better in some a lot of things than Onyakuru was. I think he's going to be more valuable in Greece for us than Onyakuru was. I just see a sticky situation here where we get caught kind of in a similar a similar rut with him where the opportunities that we saw him creating in the film with, with Adis, he doesn't get with Libyakos and he'll struggle. Those are kind of the risks I see, especially given the fact that he's not great finishing when the defense is in front of him, when he gets opportunities where he has to take a shot and he's got three, four defensive guys in front of him. He's got to take a shot uh, up near the penalty area or at the edge of the penalty box. I didn't see him do well with those, and he didn't score a lot from those situations. I think he scored one goal at, in, in that type of context, and that was in stride anyway. So the, there's the risk from his player profile. And going beyond that, there's there's risk besides that. And it's not just his player risk or his uh, risk when it comes to his ability. It's It's the risk with the personnel choice given what we've seen now in the friendlies. So we've gone through three friendlies so far with the club at the time I'm recording this deep dive, and we've seen primarily a 4-3-3. That's the formation we're seeing Pedro Martins use in these friendlies. Whether he sticks with it or not is a, is a different question entirely. We saw 4-4-2 a lot in preseason last season. We know Pedro Martins is has swapped between formations before. Kamara has played in a 4-3-3 but we and a 4-2-3-1 as well with Adis. But I saw his best performances in a 4-4-2. So the concern is if we brought him because we want to play a 4-4-2, which we know is Martin's favorite formation, he said that himself. If the team transitions to a 4-4-2, I don't see him being able to play in a big little setup as the little. And what I mean is the guy that is the, uh, when you talk about big man, little man, the little man's usually the one that's helping set up and helping create. He's the big man. So, and if that's the case, and we're going to be sticking with four strikers on this roster this season and nobody moves on. Uh, now, quick seg, quick tangent though, Tequino has been linked with a move to Turkey. So, but he hasn't moved yet. So as of right now, we have four strikers. You've got Yusef El Arabi, who can play in both the big man and little man role. He has the capability to create and produce. But then you have big man. You have Tequino and Hassan. Neither one of those guys can be a creator or the little man in that setup. Another individual that can sort of play a little man is uh, Matthew Valbuena. But if we're relying on Yusef El Arabi and Matthew Valbuena to play as the little man in a 4-4-2 setup all season, that's not sustainable. 38 and 35 years old, that's really not sustainable. We don't really have anybody else we're looking at. But then again, if we're playing a 4-3-3, three, three, when, when is he going to see time? And if what we've heard reported is true, that there's a swap deal and the value of this transfer is at $5 million plus Lovera going the other way, are we paying that much money for a rotation option? There's no way. In a 4-3-3, three, three, are we going to throw him out on the wing? I don't think so. But at the same time, there's no way El Arabi is not the starter. So the risks I see with this player, as much as there may be some things regarding some of his playing ability that I think we may not see translate well, given how teams in Greece play against us, I'm more so concerned with the risk based on the system that we could be using. 
that's where and I see the risk. And for the amount of money we're reportedly paying for him, especially with Lovera going the other way, uh-uh. It's a very high risk. It's a very high risk move. But that being said, guys, what's the value proposition with him? You've heard me say it multiple times. The value proposition, and it's something we're starting to see with a lot of these transfers. It's something that we're seeing with a lot of them. It's their their movement off the ball and their progressive actions. So do they come back? Are they tracking back? Are they able to move and make space? Are they able to draw defenders with them? A lot of every deep dive I've done is has been a lot of players with very high levels of off the ball movement. The pattern there is undeniable. We are looking for more players that can not only stretch the field, but actually move and create options for our midfielders who get stuck with the ball and have nobody to play to and aren't really the guys that are going to go take players on or progress the ball forward unless their name is Mari Camara. And that's Mari Camara on in one of his good seasons. So his value proposition is he has great off the ball movement. He's physical. He's fast. And in those scenarios, if we can find a way to exploit that, he will be dangerous. He was dangerous for Adis. I saw so many dangerous moments, even when he wasn't scoring goals. And that could also translate to Europe as well. In, in games in Europe, he's going to be more likely to have open space. We're going to be probably pushed in deep further. So especially in the Champions League, that's his value proposition. Whether or not he does it is another story, but that's the value proposition there. It's not in his technical ability. It's not in his ability to read the game so much. It is in his off-the-ball movement and his speed and physicality. That's what's going to be valuable for this team. And if he can make that work in Greece, if we can find ways to create space for him and get him behind the defense in, with these teams that park the bus, he'll be, he'll be deadly. And before I go, I, I do want to let you guys know that I do have a higher hope for this player than I did for Onyekuru because he does have a wider skill set. So just in case everybody, some people are thinking, oh, he's saying this is going to be another Onyekuru. He's going to be garbage. No, that's not it at all. I see some similarities, but I do think he's a better player than Henry Onyekuru. And I do think he has a higher likelihood of succeeding than Onyekuru did. That being said, guys, I hope you enjoyed the latest deep dive about Abu Bakar Kamara. Where there's probably going to be more coming. There's more rumors on the horizon. Oh, my Lord, if Gustavo Scarpa comes, I, I'm going to be so excited to do that deep dive. That's a player that you guys are going to love watching. Don't forget, hit that like and subscribe button. If you want to catch the future deep dives, you want to catch the future shows we're doing, we've got a lot of stuff saved up for you guys. We have the award show coming up. So many great things coming up. So stay tuned. Check out our spaces on social media. Don't forget to follow. Tell your friends to follow. Help us grow this red-white community as it continues to grow into something none of us even dreamed of. It's fantastic. We love it. And we hope that we continue to make it bigger and better with your help. As always, guys, I'm Adi. This is Gate 7 International. And until next time, we'll see you. Gatimagica, o pupa já se, lá me vai dar